Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Harakakudash. That's the name of the Heavenly Father, who you ignorantly call God, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I would also like to give a double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth. And I would like to say a sincere Shalom to the hopeful elect, the men that are prophesying and laboring in this truth and in this doctrine throughout the four winds of the world. To you, I say Shalom. Okay, the title of this lesson is, is going to be Can't Stop the Inevitable Famine. And the famine is inevitable. All right, it's a plague, it's an end, end time plague that the Heavenly Father, that excuse me, that the Heavenly Father through his prophets and Yahweh Shai spoke of, of the end times. All right, so this is this is hap this is another indication of many prophecies that have taken place that we're at the end of this. All right, and nothing's going to make this famine go away. No amount of money, Esau could put all their um, resources into agriculture and making sure you know the the, the, the harvest comes in. And no, it's not going to work because this is sent from Yahweh by Shema Shai. And when it's sent, who is he? The scripture says, who is he that may turn it back? No one can turn back these plagues. OK, and in this article, which is a, it's a very short article, but it has a uh, great significance because this is something that is going to happen uh, uh, is happening. All right. In, in, in various parts of the world, where eventually it's going to hit here in America. When it hit here, when it hits here in America, it's going to hit hard because the people here in America are gluttonous. They, they, they eat four and five and six times a day. They're used to having a uh, uh, food, um, you know, fast food whenever they want it. And, and, and you know. Just drive up to a drive through and you can get food. That's 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 how the people here in America are conditioned to 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 be and to live. All right, and they're not they're not people here aren't ready for a famine. People are here aren't ready to go uh, uh, days, possibly weeks without having food or having a small portion of food. Okay, but these famines are taking place to um to several countries, you know, in uh, in Africa, uh, the Middle East, and other parts of the world. All right. And this is just a small this is just a small taste of, of the of the terror that the Heavenly Father is bringing to this place. All right. So this article is entitled UN pulls 100 million from emergency funds in bid to advert famines. And they could bring a 100 billion dollars. It's not going to work. OK. And these people right here are standing in line to get vouchers. It says people in line, people stand in line to receive vouchers at a food distribution center supported by the World Food Program in Santa Yemen, okay? And they're standing in their line to get vouchers, and you better believe that it's only a small portion of food that they're going to get, they're, they're, that they're going to receive. And a lot of these, majority of these people have probably got families where they got to take, they got four or five mouths to feed, and that food that they receive from their voucher may, may only feed two of them, okay? So there you have a famine. You have a scarcity of food, all right? And like I said, it's going to, it's going to grow. It's going to grow. And, and, and amongst these people, amongst these nations, is the Israelites, all right? Because those are those scourges for amendments sent to get your Israelites right, to turn you turn you away from uh, 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 this devil's uh, wicked society, this devil's wicked uh, 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 um, setup, and, and turn to the Heavenly Father and repent. All right, so let me read this article. It says, United Nations aid chief, um, chief Mark Lowcock said on Tuesday he would use $100 million from the world's body emergency Fund to help seven countries to tr try seven countries try to avert uh, famine fueled by conflict, spiraling economy economies, climate control, excuse me, climate change, and the COVID nineteen pandemic. And those are all those are all plagues sent from the heavenly Father. Those are all end time prophecies. Conflict, nation shall rise against nation. Oh, a, spir uh, a spiraling economies. The heavenly Father is 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 going to um. It's going to bring down this economic infrastructure of Esau. All right, this is starting with their dollar. All right, they, which, which is which is uh, which is losing its value every day. Climate change. All right, when when they when the Heavenly Father is sending storm and tempest throughout the whole planet. Okay, uh, uh, there's been multiple storms, hurricanes, uh, uh, floods, which contribute to um, famine. For for instance, the floods that took place here in the Midwest, I believe last year. Um, which 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 killed a lot of uh, uh, crops and it killed a lot of livestock. All right, eventually those things have a long term effect because, yeah, the the government can bail them out and give them money, but at the end of the day, that um that doesn't bring that doesn't make their harvest come in the money. All right, just like this, uh, these they're trying to give a hundred, they're giving a hundred million dollars to these seven countries. That's not going to make things better. All right, 
and you know, and they're going to try to do the same thing here. They're going to try to, you know, uh, uh, push money. They're going to uh, Biden or Trump, whoever's in office, is going to try to give money to help fight hunger, and it's not going to work. OK, because the heavenly this is a plague sent from the heavenly father and everything that you do to try to combat that is going to fail. All right. So some 30 million dollars will be spent in Yemen, 15 million each in Afghanistan and northeast Nigeria, 7 million each in South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo and 6 million in Burkina Faso. Lowcock said 20 million had also been set aside in anticipation of a worsening situation in Ethiopia. And you can't forget about the uh, the swarms of locusts that that uh, uh, went through and uh, killed um, killed all those crops in um, was it east uh, east Af parts of East Africa and uh, a lot a lot of the parts of the uh, Middle East. Okay, that took place earlier this year. That's a plague. That's a plague. That, that those locusts in the even in the ancient world locusts. Were sent to uh were sent by the heavenly father to, uh, to kill off the crops, okay. The prospect of return, this prospect, and actually, I forgot. Um, it said the COVID nineteen pandemic back in the the first paragraph. Obviously, that's a plague sent from the heavenly father, former pestilence. All right, it said the prospect of a return to a world in which famines are are commonplace would be a heart wrenching and obscene and obscene in the world. Where there is so, where there is more than enough food for everyone, famines result in agonizing and humiliating deaths. Lowcock said, "That's it. The scriptures say that. The scriptures clearly say that." And I'm gonna get that scripture in Lamentations. I said, "Their impact on countries is devastating and long-lasting." He said in a statement. And, and how much more when the, when the famine hits here in America, where people are proud, people are gluttonous. All right, people always want more than they can have. People go hoard up food. All right, people are hoarding up food right now because of the uh, the rising uh, uh, cases of COVID, and they they and everyone it's clear to everyone that Esau is about to shut this thing down again. All right, nearly five hundred million have been paid into the UN Central Emergency Response Fund in two thousand and twenty. It is used to enable the world body to to respond quickly to new humanitarian crises or under, underfunded emergencies without having to wait for embarked donations. Excuse me, donations. All right, and they can donate. And they can, like I said, they can put a hundred, they can put a trillion dollars into this. All right, it's not going to, it's not going to make anything better, make anything better. All right. Uh, uh, this famine is, is, and the famine is real because people don't realize. All right. When was the last time you actually, so when's the last time you went a day without food? All right. Let alone weeks. It's, that's going to take place. People are going to go days, weeks without food. People are going to die of starvation. Thus, they have the scriptures. All right. Let me get this scripture uh, real quick. Lamentations chapter um, four and verse nine. It says, they that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. That's starvation for the pine for they for these pine away stricken through for what? For want of fruits of the field, all right, it's better to get shot down, or 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 because you know the, the modern day sword is the gun. It's better to be shot down in the street like a dog than to die of hunger. Because when you die of hunger, we are when you your your body is eating away at itself, all right. Because your your body's you know whether you be stop whether you eat or not, your body still needs the uh, uh the nutrients and the things as it's used to. So if, if when they don't get when your body doesn't get them, they they start to get them from different other places and your body begins to eat at each other, eat, eat at itself, all right? Like you see those kids in Somalia and, and those uh, third world countries over in Africa with their ribs showing and shit. That's going to happen here in America. You're going to see people famished like that. And it's hard to believe because America is, 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 is you know, so-called the greatest country and all the way up here at the top and everyone's at the bottom. That's why the Heavenly Father is going to bring America low for the pride of America, okay? Let me grab this real quick. Second Ezra's... Um, Second Ezra 15, and I'm going to start at verse 5. Behold, save the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. And the world is talking about the whole world, all right? The sword, famine, death, and destruction, okay? The Lord is bringing all those things, all right? Sword, famine, death, and destruction, nothing good, all right? Why? Because the sixth verse is going to say it. For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. The hurtful works are fulfilled. Wickedness, wickedness is is at an all time high, especially in these last days. So the heavenly Father got to send these things. He got to send. He got this. Got to, heavenly Father 
has to send the famine, has to bring death, has to bring the sword, has to bring ultimate destruction of Esau's, this wicked system that Esau has built up, all right, this wicked system which you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and, and the Israelites scattered amongst these heathen nations believe in, all right? If the famine hits you, Esau is going to, first person that Jacob is going to turn to is Esau, looking for an answer, looking for a solution, looking for a handout, not the Heavenly Father. That's why the Most High got to jack this place up. Okay, because you're not looking for the heavenly father. You're not reading the scriptures and where it says that the uh, uh, my servant shall eat. You're looking for Esau. You're looking for a hey, Jay gonna be looking for a food voucher from Esau eventually. Okay, that's the truth about it, man. That's gonna happen. That has to happen. All right, this is uh, Second Ezra chapter sixteen, and I'm starting at verse eighteen. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning. All right, this ain't this is this, this this is just the beginning of great mourning. All right, mourning for your loved ones because they died of COVID. All right, you're eventually going to mourn for your loved ones because they died of that they died of starvation and COVID. Okay, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, the and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils come? Actually, yeah, that was that, I'm, I meant to read that, but I want to start right here actually because like I was saying before previously, this is a plague sent from the heavenly Father. All right, this is um. Second Ezra three, and I'm gonna jump back down to that verse. A sword is sent upon you, and who may, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? That's a question. May any may may any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood, or may any one quench the fire in the stubble when it has begun to burn? May one turn again the arrow that is shot from a strong archer? The mighty Lord sendeth plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? All right? Hey, and Esau believes that he can drive these plagues away, but he can't. You Ain't, ain't no vaccine, ain't no hundred million, a hundred billion dollars going to stop this famine. All right? No one's going to drive these plagues away, because these plagues are here to stay until this place is completely destroyed. All right, let me jump back down to verse 18. I'm reading 18 and 19. Oh, it says, the beginning of sorrows, the beginning of great mourning, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent for scourges, for amendment, for you to amend your ways and come back to the Heavenly Father, you Israelites. These things are sent, all right? This should be a warning to you Israelites to repent, Because, but I, our people are, are, are proud. They didn't think COVID-19 was going to come over here as long as it was over there in China. And next thing you know, that shit landed here and, 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 and things ain't been the same. And things will never go back to being the same. Okay? And that was, that's a scourge for amendment. But will you Israelites get right? Hell no. Our people are still stuck on stupid thinking that, you know, once this vaccine comes, everything's going to be back to the same. Man, shit is never going to be the same here. It's only going to get worse. And we're in those end times. And, and how was I spoke of this? Let me grab this. Uh, Matthew 24 and verse 5. Um, yeah, this is Yahweh Shai. This is, I'll read, I'll start at 3 so you can get a, um, you know, context of what, 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 what was going on. All right. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives, Yahweh Shai. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall the signs of thy coming be? And the end of the world, the end of an age. All right, this is the, the heavenly Father. Excuse me, the heavenly Father, and, and it says the sign of thy coming. All right, when you're going to come back and, and establish your kingdom. All right, the how, the, the, the disciples were um, asking Yahweh Shai this, and Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying I am a Mashiach, meaning the Anointed, and they shall deceive many. For nation, actually, uh, so I can, yeah. Uh, verse six, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye ye be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All right, so all this stuff, the famine, the the, the rising against nation, the race riots, the world war, that's the beginning. It's going to be a time like it's never been since there was a nation, according to um, what is that? Uh, uh, Daniel, t t Daniel twelve and one. Okay, these are the beginning of sorrows. Look at this. 
And you should know what a famine is. I'm going to just look it up in the uh, blue letter to um, give you more context. Scarcity of harvest, famine. Uh, dearth, famine, hunger. Okay, scarcity of food. That's going to take place. It's going to take place here in America so hard that, you man, you thought you had a pantry full of food, a freezer full of uh, 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 food and, and canned goods. Man, that shit going to be gone so fast, and you might not even be the one that eats it. That's how, that's how, that's how cold the Heavenly Father is. You sitting up here planting and hoarding food, thinking that you're going to be straight. Man, if you ain't put your faith in your Habashim Yahushua, you're done. All right? And, and first and foremost, you Israelites. All right? Because these Edomites are already through. All right? So, um... Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to the elect, and I would like to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Yahweh Double honor to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom.